Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Louise, coming to you from this old vape shop. I just wanted to do a quick video. Actually, I'm lying. It's not a quick video. It's going to be a little bit of time for you guys to sit through this and watch it. But I'm going to give you guys a lot of good information in regards to uh, the coming uh, regulations. They're not even coming regulations. These are regulations that are now um, in the works and they will be put into process come August 8th of this year. Um, I have to be honest with all of this regulation talk. Uh, the last two weeks here at the shop, it's been really difficult, um, not only for myself, but also for my employees, because I haven't been the easiest person to deal with, because it's really kind of freaked me out. It's really put a damper on the whole attitude here in the shop. So if you guys have felt that while you guys were in the shop, I want to apologize. But uh, it's definitely a heavy thing for me to uh, deal with right now, because I have put everything I have into this business, into this shop, and everything that I do. I mean, not only do I do it for myself and my family, but I also do it to keep my employees employed, and I also do it to get people off of cigarettes. I mean, that was goal number one when I opened up the shop. Unfortunately, um, the culture and stuff has kind of changed that all up a little bit. It's gotten a little bit bigger than just changing, keep getting people off of cigarettes. It's really changed into a culture of giant clouds and blowing O's and stuff, and then that's fine. I mean, that's, that's stuff that people like to do, and it's fun, and it's enjoyable. Um, but it's really, uh, for me, I think it's kind of forgotten about the smokers and the people who can really, really benefit from this kind of product. Um, so, yeah, it's just, there's been a lot going on. And, and, I, and I can tell you that I've been to multiple meetings, uh, not only with NAVB, which I'm a part of and have been a part of for about two years, uh, but with Safada. I went to their meeting also, and I've watched numerous videos and watched countless articles, read countless articles in regards to what these regulations are all about. Uh, so I ha it is heartbreaking. It really, really is because of what the FDA is doing to this. Uh, what it is in, in effect is it's, it's a de facto ban. What they've done is they designed the regulations to be so strict that within two years, the current vape industry will be pretty much decimated. We, the way we know vape now will no longer be around if something doesn't miraculously happen or something doesn't change. Um, can we change it? I don't know. Uh, Craig Larson from Kidney Puncher, talking to him in private a little bit, you know, he said, we have to understand that this is, this isn't a, a 50 yard dash. It is a, a football game, you know? So the first play of the game, the kickoff of the game was the FDA dropping these regulations. Uh, the second would be a couple of the lawsuits that are coming up between some of these manufacturers that are filing lawsuit up against the FDA and also some of these advocacy groups that are, are uniting together in order to to take this to litigation, to take it and, and really hopefully fight what they're doing to hopefully save the industry. Um, if maybe not in the same sense as we know it now, but at least in a sense to where we can all enjoy it the way we have to a certain extent. Uh, it's, it's really, really tough for me. I have been talking to a lot of people as they've been coming into the shop. It seems to be the talk of the shop right now, and I'm sure it is everywhere. And I'm not sure if you guys go to different shops or not, uh, but I hope the shops that you go to are a part of advocacy. I hope the shops that you support are really concerned about this industry. I hope you're not supporting a, a company that really doesn't care about uh, the vapor, doesn't care about the smoker, and, and is only there for the money grab. So I definitely want to encourage you guys to support shops to do that. And there are numerous ones here. I know I'm a part of NAVB, and there's about 15 of us that get together on a regular basis and discuss what's going on uh, in regulation, what's going on at the house downtown in Phoenix here. I know that there's a bunch of shops that are involved with Safada here locally also. I mean, any, any advocacy group is a good group to be a part of because they're really here to make sure that the vaping industry sustains itself so i just kind of wanted to go over a few things just kind of touch on them and again i'm not a lawyer i'm not somebody who was really read into this as well as maybe other people but i have paid a lot of attention to a lot of people who have read into this who have had lawyers really look over the 500 page report in regards to the regulations and um really broke it down to where we can kind of understand it as lay people uh, myself being included in, in that group because to be honest, the legal mumble jumble it really kind of clogs my brain up and it just doesn't process right. So I need to go and listen to people who know more about it about me and then I can take it and ingest it and process it and then put it out to you guys. So I haven't put a video out about it yet uh, simply because I've had to process it all in myself and my own mind. 
Um, and like I said, it definitely was heartbreaking. I mean, I went to one meeting two weeks ago with NAVB, and the mood there was not very good. And then a week later, I went to the Safada meeting, and, it, and the mood wasn't any different. I was really hoping to go to the second meeting and, and them tell me, no, this is not going to be a problem. Let's, uh, we've got a chance. We've got, we've got the ability to fight this. And, and I didn't hear that. I mean, yes, we have the ability to fight it. There's a few things that are happening that are going on right now that – we can be a part of not only as vape shop owners but also as consumers that will hopefully make a difference in the long run and again like craig said this isn't a 50 yard dash it's it's a football game so there's been a couple of kick off there's been a kickoff and there's been a couple of plays and we still got a lot to go and we have about two years to do all of this um a few of the things uh, the first thing that's coming up is august 8th 2016 uh, that is the date that innovation and new products stop um, nothing else can be created after that so you know as often as you guys have come in here you guys i mean the number one question in the shop is what's new what's new what's new you know that's what i heard the whole first year i was open and i continue to hear it on a daily basis here everybody wants to know what's new and what's fresh uh, well that's going to stop here august 8th it really really is and it's going to come to a complete halt so what you're going to see here in the next few few weeks, few months or so, is you're going to see a surge of products on the market. Not only a surge of products such as hardware, but also in juice, um, anything that's vape related. Because unfortunately now, this box here, this little box right here is now a tobacco product. This little tank here without any nicotine in it is now considered a tobacco product by the FDA. And that's kind of crazy, man. I mean... Uh, it's hardware. It's electronics. It's it's technology. It's not even a. It's not combustible. You can't burn it. You can't light it up with a lighter and smoke it by itself. I mean, you have to add something to it, and and that's the juice that we vape. Now, they consider juice to be a tobacco product now too, because we derive the nicotine from tobacco plant. Um, is it tobacco in the sense that we combust it? No. Is it tobacco in the sense that we use the nicotine out of it? Yes. Um, and to be honest, I think it's been classified as tobacco for quite a time now. It's just now they're putting regulation up against it. So I'm going to say it's a pretty heavy day. Uh, we're going to see a lot of different changes in the shop here. Uh, if you go to a shop that makes juice in front of you, I'm going to tell you that you can probably um, bet that that shop will not be doing that anymore. Um, after August 8th simply because you're going to need a manufacturer's license to create that in your shop and not only do you need a manufacturer's license but you're going to need the ability you're going to need to have already submitted all the products they already make in their shop as a product to the FDA now those products for instance Big Willie's custard right so Big Willie's custard comes in about five different nicotine levels 0, 3, 6, 12 and 18 this little bottle here right this is one product to us in our mind and how we work and how we vape. Big Willie's Zero or Big Willie's 18, it's the same thing to us. It is not to the FDA. It is completely different. So not only is Big Willie going to have to submit a uh, registration and a PMTA, pre-market tobacco application to this guy on zero milligrams, he's going to have to do it for 3, 6, 12, and 18. And not only that, he's going to have to do it all the testing on a product that's been tested by the FDA already or has been put through the testing and been approved. And to be honest, there's no product on the market that has been done that yet. Nothing, nothing on the market has had that done to it. So it's going to be a really difficult task. Um, I'm actually in the best position as a retailer because I do not make my own product. I'm really going to be dependent on the people who make the product I sell and put on my shelves to do their due diligence and go through and file all the paperwork that they're supposed to file. Uh, by December 31st of 2016. If a juice maker, if let's say for instance Big Willie's and Will, I'm talking Willie, I'm talking to you, if he does not <laughs> submit his paperwork by December 31st, this product will have to be pulled off of my shelf. And that's scary. That's crazy scary. So he's going to have a lot of work. He's going to have a, a lot of uh, elbow grease he's going to have to put into it to make sure that his product can stay on my shelf here for the next two years. Um, if he doesn't, I think I'm going to have to pull it. And that's going to suck because it's delicious juice and it's my favorite juice. Um, and that's going to have to happen with all the lines here in the shop. I mean, not only Big Willie's Custard, but Vaporlicious, Muse Juice, R&D, the Steam Factory, Potion Cellar, all these different juice companies that I carry, um, the 
Pro Art. And actually, Pro Art is pretty good. They're ahead of the game. They're already registered. They've had it for a while now here. So Aaron and Adam, I commend you guys. You guys saw it coming. You guys were ahead of it. You guys are awesome. Come in and try out the Pro Art juice. Let's get back to what I'm talking about here. So that August 8th, market freezes, right? Uh, by August 2018, they're going to have to submit the pre-market tobacco application. And this is why this, this regulation is designed to decimate the industry. The problem is, is like the application to the FDA is super cheap. It's like 85 bucks per SKU, right? Most people can handle that. That is not the final cost of it. The final cost, you have to have everything run and tested through specific laboratories and all this different stuff. Now, they estimate that those costs could cost up to a million dollars per SKU. So with Big Willie's Custard, one flavor, five SKUs, that's $5 million. Now, I know Willie. I know he's got a good product. I know I send him a lot of money, but I can guarantee you I've never sent him $5 million. So that's going to be really difficult to keep him on the market uh, two years, three years from now because of the regulations being so strict and so outlandish, you know. Um, there's a few things we can do um, as consumers, you know. Well, let me get back to that. Testing in the shop, right, on August 8th is going to have to come to a halt. I can no longer give you give you free samples. So every time you guys came in and you guys tried juice here at the counter, I am not going to be able to do that again. That sucks because that is so much of my business. You guys enjoy coming in here and hanging out and talking and trying out all the different flavors and finding the one that's just right for you. That's long going to be long gone here come August 8th. Um, a lot of people are going to try to skirt it. They're going to talk about, oh, well, I'm going to put zero nicotine into it and uh you know it's not tobacco well that's true but the problem is is that if at the moment i open up a bottle of zero milligram juice and i put it into a tank and put it on top of a battery i have created a new product a new tobacco product because those batteries and those tanks are considered tobacco products it's the end use of the product that they're regulating so I cannot even do that. Uh, I'm not even sure how it's going to work out, how we're going to do it. You know, I definitely encourage you guys to come in and try everything out now here over the next couple months so that you guys know what you guys really like. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be weird. The industry is going to get shaken up and um, a lot of businesses are going to go under. I mean, I don't even know where I'm going to be at here in the next year, two years. It may get to a point to where people don't give up or people give up and they go back to smoking. And that sucks um, because that's why we're in business we want people off of cigarettes we know that cigarettes kill 440,000 people a year here in the United States alone and that's a crazy number yet they're still allowed to sell cigarettes they're still allowed to be in every store um, yes they can't advertise yes they can't have flashy packaging but they're still being sold and considered safe to a certain extent here in the United States um, and, and the FDA backs them up so it's really going to be a tough time you know a lot of people have been talking about too you know well we'll derive nicotine from avocados or eggplant or something like that the problem with that is it's no longer nicotine it's no longer a tobacco product right right the bad part is it is now a designer drug so now you don't have the fda on your ass you have the drug enforcement agency on your ass because you haven't registered a new designer drug in their offices with them so that's kind of crazy right there. So for me personally, I'm not using eggplant nicotine. Um, I'm going to use tobacco nicotine for as long as possible uh, until the regulations hopefully get changed or something smooths out there. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to play within the lines for as long as I can to sustain my business. So, yeah, man, it's been it's been really crazy. It's been really nuts. The other thing we're not going to be able to do is build you guys coils. I know a lot of you guys come in here and we build you guys coils all the time. You know, Clapton coils, alien wire coils, all these different things that we've been doing for you guys for the last three years here at this old vape shop. We're not going to be able to do that. Why? Because it's considered creating a new tobacco product. I know it's stupid. It is stupid. It really is. But in order to stay within the guidelines of the law, we cannot do that for you anymore come August 8th. So for those of you people out there who like to build or like to have us come in and build for you guys or like to have us build for you guys when you come in, you guys better get on it. You better start picking Jesse's brain, picking Max's brain on how to build these coils that you love so much because you're going to have to do it yourself because we won't be able to do it anymore. And I can't do it in the shop. We won't even be able to build it for ourselves inside the shop. 
So it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, craziness. Um, what can we do as consumers and vape shop owners? There's a couple of things. I need you guys to go to kasa.org. That's C-A-S-A-A dot org and sign up with them. It's free to sign up. What they're going to do is those guys are kind of the leaders in it all. They're the ones that feed us all the information we need to know. We need to know. Uh, all the information that's coming through from the top all the way to the bottom. Uh, they're going to send out emails on a regular basis. They're going to send out calls to action on a regular basis. And they've been doing this for a long time now. And they're very efficient at it. So go in there, sign up, get your emails, pay attention to the emails, and see what you have to do. When there's a call to action and they need you to write senators, write your senators. Right, you know, call your senators, call your representatives, and let them know that you guys vote and that you guys vape, and you need them to stand up for your right to vape. Um, the other thing is the Safada.org. Uh, these guys are great on a national level and also at a local level. Will Cohen over there at Vape Event, he's the head honcho over there for Safada. Went to their meeting last week. I'm also a member there. Um, those guys, you know, get involved with them. They uh, definitely know what's going on, and they kind of know they, they know these regulations a lot more than I do, inside and out. Um, and NAVB also, that's the advocacy group I've been a part of for the last two years. A uh, really good group of guys, probably about 15 shop owners and another 10, you know, juice makers and hardware manufacturers and stuff like that. These are the guys that are here locally that have, have been consistently going down to the state capitol, going up to Cottonwood, going up to Kingman when stuff comes up in legislation there to fight it. Um, so they've done a really good job. Make sure and support them. Make sure and support the shops that support them. If you guys are going to shops that don't care about advocacy, they do not need your money anymore. Make sure and put the money in the hands of the shops and the hands of the people who are supporting advocacy and are fighting against these regulations. Because if that person doesn't care about you, they don't care about you and they only want your money. To me, that's crazy. This is my business. I need to care about advocacy. I need to be a part of advocacy groups. So make sure and shop in a shop that supports that. Um, a couple other things is the Cole Bishop Amendment, right? Uh, and HR 205. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been seeing that on Facebook and you may be confused as to what's what. Uh, as far as I know, from what I hear from all the higher ups in these advocacy groups, they're saying to support both. Please get in there, support both, write your senators, write your congressmen, let them know that they need to support this because you vape, you vote, like I say early, said earlier. Um, the HR 2058 will change the predicate date from 2007 to 2016. Uh, so what that means is that if HR 2058 does not pass, we will be reversed to 2007 and the products that were available um, two years from now will be only able to sell what was available before 2007. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but vaping in 2007 kind of sucked. I mean, vaping in 2013 kind of sucked for me because I was just using Sigalikes. They're horrible. They don't taste good. They don't vape well. They're not really two packs, right? And the batteries suck. So for me, I don't want to vape on a product like that. So we want to make sure the HR2058 goes through. Um, a couple of petitions out there. I know you guys probably see, you know, let's fight the FDA. You guys probably see F the FDA or let's stop the FDA. A lot of these petitions don't really do so much. It's written by people who randomly put their thoughts together, throw it up there, and then hope to get it to go viral for some reason. Uh, but those, President Obama isn't like looking at those things every morning and saying, you know what, we need to go fight the FDA. He's just not. What we need to do is sign petitions that are in the hands of the proper people. So... Larry Faircloth, he's a senator, um, he has a petition he's put together, and what he needs is 100,000 signatures. Now, with those 100,000 signatures, he'll be able to take it to his peers and say, hey, we need to evaluate what the FDA is doing here. But he needs 100,000 signatures. So you guys need to get out there and get on that uh, LarryWFaircloth.com and sign. look for the tab, and the tab says fight the FDA. So it's Larry, L-A-R-R-Y, W, Faircloth, F A I R. C L O T H dot com. Click his fight the FDA button to make sure his and sign his petition. Um, another guy that's doing really good for us is uh, Ron Johnson, Senator Ron Johnson. He's he's really he's the first one to get out there and really question the FDA. He's he's sent them a letter. He's requesting, you know, why are they running these regulations without doing their due diligence and testing? Um, do they know the effects of what's going to happen in the vapor industry and um, why are they doing it this way without doing it properly? So 
Ron Johnson's a cool dude. Make sure and check out his website. Support him. Um, uh, hashtag answer Ron Johnson is a big thing on Twitter right now. Let's get that going viral so that people see what's going on. Uh, so, yeah, this is crazy. It's a crazy time in vape. The way we vape now, uh, it's not going to be here for very long if something doesn't change. We're in the middle of history. That's kind of the thing I noticed when I was at the NAVB meeting. We were all sitting there and we were watching and I was listening to my to the leaders there talking and I'm listening to an action by the government, by a, a government regulatory committee that is going to wipe out and decimate a whole industry in two years. And it's designed that way. The FDA has designed it to make it so difficult that nobody can afford to be in it except for big tobacco or big pharma. Now, as far as I'm concerned, big tobacco is not going to get another damn dollar out of me. I smoked for too long and had a difficult time breathing for too long and felt like shit for too long to go back and give them any money. Vaping has really changed my life. It helps me to breathe better. I can walk up and down stairs better. And I'm a big dude, so I need all the help I can get. You know what I'm saying? So I know vaping changes lives. I know vaping saves lives. I'm evidence of that. The thousand customers or so that come through my door a month know that. I see it every day. I have old ladies and young men who come in and they say, Luis, Jesse, Max, thank you so much to introducing us for introducing us to vaping. You guys have really saved us. We feel better. We smell better. Uh, my family's happy about it, and I don't feel like I'm enslaved to smoking anymore. It's a huge thing. Public perception has been kind of tainted about vapors. A lot of us look at us like we're douchey because we're chucking clouds, or we're blowing O's, or we're having competitions, we're rolling around on herbivores. That stuff's cool. I really don't mind it, uh, but it really isn't what we're here for and what our industry is all about. It's definitely not why I got into it. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy a nice cloud. Be honest, I found them, I don't need them anymore. It's cool stuff, but it's really not the big deal for me. My main goal is to get people off of cigarettes. People like your mother, your father, your aunts, your uncles, your brothers and sisters. So if this doesn't change, if we don't get involved and start stepping up and talking to people about this and changing the, the public's perception about vaping and bringing it back from a giant cloud blowing douchebag to, wow, this product really saves lives, a lot of lives are going to be lost. I mean, a lot of lives. We know 444,000 people die a year from tobacco. Now multiply that by 10 years. That's a lot of people. That's a ton of people. That's like 7 million people are going to die in 10 years. I hope my math's right. Either way, it's a ton of people who are dying from, from smoking. Um, so, yeah, get involved. Casa.org, Safada.org, NationalVape.org. Larry W. Faircloth org or dot com. I'm sorry. Uh, make sure and support the Cole Bishop Amendment, H.R. 2058. Contact your congressmen, your senators, write them letters, call them, set up appointments with them, talk to them, let them know you vape. When you see them out in public at the grocery store here locally, talk to them. Say, tell them how much vaping has saved your life and how much it's changed you for the better. Uh, we definitely need that uh, in today's culture. We need to reverse what people think of us and we need to let people know that this product is changing everybody right now um, what else um, from that I know I didn't go through a whole lot I know I gave you guys a lot of information uh, but there's still so much more if you guys have more questions don't hesitate to come into the shop I know that my guys are pretty well versed in it you know I've taken them to meetings I've also you know fed down the food chain you know the information I was getting and uh, they can talk to you about it too not just myself uh, but if you want to come in and talk to me just call the shop make sure I'm here I'll make sure I'm here and uh, we'll get together and we'll hammer it out and see what's up see what we can come up with uh, but as of right now that's what we got and that's where it's at right now uh, there's a whole lot more to it like I said we can get into it I can't explain it all I'm already at a 25 minute video I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and uh, I guess we'll see you next time my name is Luis, and we'll see you at this old vape shop. Thank you very much.